The Remarkable Life of St Hilda of Whitby. St Hilda of Whitby is a significant figure in the history of English Christianity. She founded a monastery for both men and women as the Abbess of Whitby and it was one of the most important religious centres in the Anglo-Saxon world. Hilda, born in 614, was the second daughter of Herrick, nephew of Edward, King of Deria. Hilda was born into the Derian royal household, and whilst still an infant, her father was poisoned whilst in exile at the court of the Britonic King of Elmet, in what is now known as West Yorkshire. Hilda's uncle Edwin, in 625, remarried the Christian princess Ethelbert, and as part of the marriage contract, Ethelbert was allowed to continue her Roman Christian worship. She was accompanied to Northumbria with her chaplain, a Roman monk sent to England in 601 to assist Augustine of Canterbury. Augustine's mission was based in Kent and is referred to as the Gregorian mission after the Pope who sent him. Queen Ethelbert continued to practice her Christianity and no doubt influenced her husband's thinking. On Easter Day, the 12th of April, 627, King Edward and his entire court, including 13-year-old Hilda, were baptised near the site of the present York Minster. Hilda's eldest sister, Herswith, became a nun at Shell's Abbey in Gaul, modern France, and at the age of 33, Hilda, who was going to join her sister at the Abbey, decided instead to answer the call of Bishop Eden of Lindisfarne and returned to Northumbria to live as a nun. The original convent in which Hilda resided is not known, only that it stood on the north bank of the River Weir and along with a few companions Hilda learnt the traditions of Celtic monastism. These traditions were brought from Iona, a small island off the coast of West Scotland, and were brought by Bishop Aidan. After a year, Aidan appointed Hilda as the second abbess of Hartlepool Abbey. All that remains of this abbey is the monastic cemetery, which can be located near the present-day St Hild's Church in Hartlepool. In 667, Hilda was appointed founding abbess of Whitby by Oswy, an Anglo-Saxon king of Northumbria. He originally founded the monastery. Now, with Hilda at the helm of the abbey, the monastery was in the Celtic style. Members lived with one or two other individuals in small accommodations within, and men and women, although worshipped together in church, as the monastery was a traditional double, they lived separately. Although we know there was an associated church, the exact size and location is still unknown. Hilda kept the original ideals of monastism and maintained these strictly within her abbey. Christian virtues were exercised and peace and charity were held very highly. All property and goods were held in common and every individual would have to study the Bible and do good works. Hilda's work would then lead on to five men from her monastery becoming bishops, two of which, John of Beverley, the Bishop of Hexham, and Wilfred, the Bishop of York. Both men were canonised for their service to the Christian Church at a critical period in its fight against paganism. Hilda was described as a woman with great skill and who was educated to a high standard. She had a great energy and all who knew her would call her mother in recognition of her outstanding devotion and grace. Hilda gained that much of a reputation that she was sought out by kings and queens for her wisdom and advice. King Oswald of Northumberland chose Hilda's ministry as the Synod of Whitby and this reflects the prestige of Whitby Abbey itself. The Synod of Whitby was the first of the church in his kingdom and all those present accepted the king's decision to adopt the method of calculating Easter, currently used in Rome and this established using Roman practice in Northumbria as the norm. However, the monks from Lindisfarne did not accept this, and withdrew to Iona and then later to Ireland. Aged 66, an advanced age for that time, St Hilda died in 680. For the past seven years she had suffered from fever, 
but continued to work right up until her death on the 17th of November. In the last seven years of her life, she set up another monastery in Hackness, a mere 14 miles from her abbey in Whitby. Before Hilda died at Whitby, she received her last rites, and it is said that at the moment of her death, the bells tolled at the monastery in Hackness, and her soul was witnessed being borne to heaven by angels. She was then buried at Whitby, but her remains were later moved on to Glastonbury. During her life, Hilda made such an impact on individuals that there are legends in her name. A local one states that when seabirds fly over the abbey, they dip their wings in honour of St Hilda. Another tells the story of a plague of snakes, which Hilda turned to stone. And this apparently explains the presence of ammonite fossils on the shore just below. The symbols of carved ammonite later become wildly used to honour St Hilda, and have even been used for the coat of arms for St Hilda's College in Oxford, and the shield at the University of Durham's College, St Hilda and St Bede. Hilda's life works paid large tribute in the fact that she is considered a patron saint. Specifically a patron saint of learning and culture, St Hilda, a truly remarkable woman and well worth remembering. Thank you for your time and thank you for watching my video. Please subscribe to Her Remarkable History.